Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, this month's theme being poultry technologies. On today's call, we're joined by Yehuda, Yehuda El Ram, CEO of Exit. Exit's ultrasound for eggs has the potential to save the lives of over four billion chicks a year by preventing their unnecessary incubation, save the industry hundreds of millions of dollars annually by wasting half of their hatching capacity and adding billions of eggs a year to the global food supply by sending the non-incubated male eggs to the food market. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Exit's market. You're potential customers for Exit's products and services. You have built a company similar to Exit's, or uh, you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Exit may face. A few process comments before we start. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help Exit find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Uh, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we'll answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Yehuda Al-Ram, CEO of Exit. Yehuda, please feel free to take it away. Thank you, David, and hello all. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm speaking to you from our R&D facility in Israel, and I'm going to share with you uh, what we're busy doing. So... At Exit, uh, we're creating a sustainable future for the livestock industry using the most innovative tool that bioscience has to offer us these days. It all began with me being a grandson of Israeli egg farmers, and I'm proud to re-enter the industry from a slightly different angle. So it all began with uh, my co-founder and myself, Professor Danny Offen of Tel Aviv University, realizing that every year the egg industry kills billions of male chicks because the male chicks in the layer industry are an unnecessary product as this picture well presents at the same age more or less 38 days i believe this picture was taken you see that the broilers are a much larger bird than the layer and each breed is optimized to serve its purpose at the industry so obviously focusing now on the layers if you are male, you do not lay eggs and you are not large enough in order to be of interest to the poultry industry, to the broiler industry. So that your destiny is to be incubated uh, for three weeks and then to be selected as a male by these uh, human uh, male female selectors who would send the females to market, but the males who again are unnecessary and therefore nobody wants to volunteer and feed them, it will be disposed of immediately. It's a very heavy ethical, financial, animal welfare and, uh, and uh, environmental issue, which uh, should be met. Uh, in recent years, also some countries, Germany, France, uh, to name a few, have also made laws that uh, ban the practice of male chick culling starting from sometime in the near future and uh, later on in Germany, uh, not allowed to do it after a certain day. Therefore, a solution is needed uh, from any angle you look at it. And the earlier it's done, it's more efficient. And down the line also would be the only available solution to comply with recent legislation. So that's the flagship product of Exit. And uh, we use gene editing tools to make sex detectable chickens because had we known what's inside the egg at day zero because the information is there the genetics are there of male or female and they're different so if we only had a way to peep inside the egg and know what's there we could prevent the incubation of the males and uh, this all began and was brought to our attention by by animal welfare campaigns which started in 2014 or that's when we uh, came across them and a statement made by Unilever at the time and then as I described already uh, legislations uh, and and the United Egg Producers in the United States that uh, brought the awareness to this issue and the need for a solution. 
So how do we actually do it? I'll show you a quick presentation of my co-founder, Professor Danny Offen, showing a prototype of the technology. You'll see here in this quick video, two eggs. The first one is female, and the second one is a male. So it is clear that there's an optical difference which our machine sees between the two. And what we develop is a technology which has, had, which has two sides. It has the biology, which creates the detectability trait. And the electro-optics, this prototype of this machine that can actually do the scanning and look into the eggs as they're laid on day zero pre-incubation. And that machine is actually a selector. Instead of the humans doing the selection post-incubation when there's already a chick, which you need to decide whether you're going to send a, as a living creature or as a, as a dead bird. A, here, we just block the entry a, of the hatchery to the male eggs or male containing eggs and only the females enter the incubator. So the environment of hatcheries will contain only the, the, the female eggs. And then you also a, minimize the capacity of hatching power that the world needs in the layer industry by half. So, it, it, it's, it has a potential of saving all the time, the expenses, creating a premium product, uh, this male culling free eggs, which again, uh, will be a, a compulsory by regulation in, in, in many countries as we see the trend growing and, and potentially also increasing a global egg supply. And, and at the end of the day, this is what we envision supermarkets, retailers being able to sell eggs, which are not only cage-free, rage-free, and many other uh, premium eggs uh, of animal welfare, but the highest level of welfare being male culling free. The, the beauty of, of our solution and the advantages are that it is on, done at day zero. It is non-invasive. It's fully automated and seamless. It's accurate. It's cost-efficient. And uh, from the perspective of what we actually do, the fact that the biomarker, which by genetics becomes part of the genetics of the male, only attaches itself to the male, which creates this binary differentiation between male and female. So you have a biomarked male, which anyway you don't want to incubate and you push it outside of the ecosystem, whereas the female, which is the wanted product, the wanted a chick which you want to grow and lay eggs, she is untouched. So the genetics of the female is 100% identical to the genetics of the female we know today. And that's the beauty of our solution that although we have to do some gene editing, the final product is clean of any addition. The company is also uh, extending its pipeline of offering as we are becoming more and more familiar with the gene editing techniques in poultry and with the genetics of, of chicken. So what else can be done to solve uh, problems and create efficiencies and optimize the genetics of, of poultry in a way that wasn't available to, to us before? So we are now working on animal health and our first product under development now is to create resistance again by genetics to avian influenza once we meet uh, our vision. So chickens which will be born uh, with this kind of genetics will be immune to avian influenza and there will be no need for a vaccine, which uh, anyway we know has many, many issues of efficiency and is not well distributed these days. The final, finally, the, the full vision of the company is to work on more hosts and more targets and to create more optimizations and efficiencies throughout the value chain of, of livestock genetics, not only chickens and not only sex detection and animal health issues, but many more issues and again, uh, the next generation of how you can optimize genetics, uh, we are fully convinced is within the world of being able to optimize genetics by these very innovative tools. Uh, of course, these days, uh, just after the, the climate conference at Glasgow, it's also important to mention that this kind of technology meets three of uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and uh, therefore does not only contribute 
financially and ethically towards uh, animal welfare, but also uh, helps meet some of the goals of the UN regarding climate change. So I thank you for this opportunity to, to present the company and, and the technologies we're developing. And I would love to have a conversation, David, and, and take any questions you may have. Fantastic. You will thank you for a uh, for fantastic presentation and all the progress and growth to date. Exciting and important work you guys are doing. One question I, I do have is just um, around just business model and how you guys are thinking through that and sort of different pathways you guys can take to market and, and sort of what you guys are pursuing right now, but other opportunities that may arise. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the way that to bring this uh, to market is, of course, we at the end of the day are developing a, a product, which is a technology. The product is a trait. We do not uh, own genetics and we don't see ourselves as competing in that space. There are companies that develop genetics and, and own those and distribute globally. We offer traits for them to embed into their genetics and then if a genetics company chooses to embed these genetics into their in breeds, some of them, all of them, then their breed carries an extra trait. Uh, so the two traits under development now are sex detectability and avian influenza resistance. Once these companies choose to have these embedded into their genetics, eventually uh, they are able to sell these traits to their customers. So that's the, how it enters the, the, the chain. And uh, for the sexing product, which again has the detectability component and the detection component, there we meet uh, the eggs at hatcheries uh, of, the, of the chain that uh, deal with hatching those uh, layer eggs. And uh, then we offer them a, a SaaS model, sexing as a service and not software in our case. And uh, the eggs that go under our machine, uh, of course, we collect the data and, and we, we know exactly what went under our machines and, uh, and the billing is according to, to what happened uh, under those machines. So it's, uh, the model is, is the genetics through the genetics companies and the actual sexing is done at hatcheries uh, using our machine. Got it, really helpful. And then in terms of the eggs that you guys will save from being wasted fundamentally, is there any sort of product quality difference what you would expect from female eggs versus male eggs that end up in people's products? And would they, would they end up in the same, would they end up in the same cart, like carton or would it matter? Like whether or not someone got a little bit of both, like what would, like, is there any, any difference that consumers should expect? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I may have not fully understood your question, but the table eggs that reach market are infertile anyway, and they're neither male or female. The layers that lay them uh, never met males in their life. Uh, the piece the, of the value chain that this technology is relevant for is the actual production of the layers themselves. And there, there may be a 50% chance for, for hatching a male or a female, the females will go and do their job and lay those table eggs and the males will never become males. They will just remain eggs. What will be done with these eggs? It will be determined by the uh, different regulators in different right. territories. Uh, we assume that there is a chance that they can, uh, an easier chance that they can enter the, as an ingredient, uh, not in the food chain, but rather for, for, the usages of industries that uses eggs as not a food component, say the glue industry uses eggs, et cetera. But again, it's not something that, that at the moment we, we can commit. It, it will be depending on, on regulatory uh, approvals. The main issue is, is saving the males from becoming males and uh, whether or not these eggs can be used uh, TBD. Got it. Fun. Great. Well, Yehuda, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, again, congratulations on all your progress to date. I'd also like to thank our audience. We host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. If you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay uh, will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. And then finally, if you'd like to learn more, please join us in December as we kick off a month of companies working on cell-based meat or cultivated meat, uh, depending on your preferred terminology. 
Thanks so much for your time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, David, and thank you all for listening.